Okay, hello and welcome to the second industry presentation in our session housing and leakage for today. Um, I would like to give you two organizational uh, notes at the beginning. At first, um, please remember that there is the chance to um, answer some questions in the question tab and you can also download the documents of the speaker in the documentation tab. And now I like to introdu introduce um, Mr. Markus Röber. He's the Prokurist and Director of Global E-Mobility at Schuler Group and he will give us now an insight or explain us how we can move the cell case production onto the fast lane. Mr. Röber. Yeah, thank you, Konstantin, for this introduction and welcome everybody for this last session in the conference program of the Virtual Battery Exhibition. Um, in this last session, I will uh, draw your attention to the production of battery cell housings. Um, the expansion of electric mobility will require battery cell housings in massive numbers uh, with consistent quality and lowest possible cost per unit. Um, prismatic cell housings and cylindrical cell housings are currently available on the market in a large variety of formats and with, uh, I would say, non-satisfying price performance ratio. Um, we, Schuler, advanced in the processes of manufacturing battery cell housings to propose solutions for new standard cell formats, combining state-of-the-art forming processes in uh, such a way that high output optimal material utilization and high quality is warranted. First, I would like to talk a little bit about Shula. Very briefly, uh, all you have to know is that we, Shula, take care of metal forming that since 182 years. We provide presses, we provide tool and dies, automation equipment, and uh, software solutions to digitize your press shops and um, all uh, metal forming is our business. Uh, for the e -mo electric mobility uh, in particular, uh, we um, uh, take care with our machines for structural and body panels of the cars, the chassis. We take care of rotor, uh, rotor and stator cores for the electric motors and what we will, uh, the chapter of today, the cell housings of the battery cells. When we look at the battery cell for electric vehicles, we know there are three types of cells, the prismatic cell, cylindrical cell, and pouch. And um, we offer solutions for the hard cell, quite literally. That means everything which can be um, have a metal forming. This is the prismatic cell, and the cylindrical cell is um, our yeah, task to provide solutions for our customers. Let's have a look at the different raw materials and what uh, forming processes are applicable for these uh, cell cases. Uh, with prismatic cell cases, we have a lot of aluminum as raw material. Rarely we see other materials such as stainless steel. Uh, with cylindrical cell, it's the uh, other way around. There we have uh, user, usually nickel plated steel and some uh, uh, yeah, applications, also other materials like aluminium. When we look at the forming processes, then uh, you have the choice as so far if we talk about aluminium. For aluminium, you can apply two combinations. One is um, deep drawing and uh, wall ironing and the other one is so-called impact extrusion and wall iron. However, for steel cases, um, impact extrusion is not applicable and you have only the deep draw and wall ironing or DBE process available. Let's have a look first at the prismatic cells. As said, these cell cases are usually made of aluminum or aluminum alloys. And you know, so we can compare two different uh, forming uh, processes. On the left, the deep drawing and wall ironing, and on the right, the impact extrusion and wall ironing. Um, the start is quite different uh, 
we uh, with deep draw we start from coil material and by with impact extrusion we start with a slug a piece of aluminium and then you see also in the picture there is quite a big difference in the sequence of operations um, here you have a lot more uh, operations with uh, with deep draw um, process route in comparison to impact extrusion where you have um, by this process at least with one hit or uh, um, already a uh, yeah, very uh, nice case which you can then get the final shape with um, wall iron. This offers certain advantages which I will elaborate a little bit later on but here we see um, this basic principle if you if you don't know impact extrusion it's quite simple process you have a, a, the slug which is lying in the, in the die set and then the punch hits the slug and through the gap between punch and die the material flows backwards onto the punch um, and then you have this uh, so-called impact part which we we have here the, on the picture the second from left and then you do this wall ironing to reduce the wall thickness a little bit more to have a good accuracy and the final shape that means thick wall thickness and length however in both process routes you have to apply some trimming operation to cut off the edgy um, part of the case so it's quite an, an easy process and um, this means also if you compare this uh, to processes uh, you can apply higher speeds uh, for the impact extrusion uh, we talk here about speeds from between 60 and 100 parts per minute on one machine where we look at 20 to 40 parts per minute uh, on a transfer press for deep drawing you have also a difference in material utilization uh, as we saw we have uh, to start from a core material then you have some uh, scrap left over yeah you cannot use a full coil but you have only a material utilization yeah maybe 70 percent or a little bit more whereas the aluminum slug you use in its entirety yeah you have just the little scrap part of the edge or the edgy part which but this is also uh, the same for uh, deep draw so here we have a big advantage with a much better material utilization up to 90 percent um, as you saw the sequence of operations uh, the tool and die is also quite different uh, relatively easy uh, with impact extrusion complex part with uh, deep draw um, on the other hand uh, and when we talk about commercial viability the investment for such a, a solution with impact extrusion is uh, a little bit more than with deep draw. So um, this means that it is more applicable to bulk production. Now, if you go really into mass production uh, with one standardized format where you produce 20 million of cases or more per year, then we would recommend to go this route. Whereas when you have more uh, smaller medium series and maybe a lot of priorities, a lot of different uh, formats, then deep drawing uh, makes absolutely sense. We offer both solutions um, and uh, to yeah, have the, the, the perfect fit for customer requirements. Uh, but uh, you can, from this comparison, you can, uh, let's say, judge which area you would fit in. Just a look on such a production line. The time is not enough to go into the details. Uh, just think of approximately 20 million uh, ca uh, cases per year, which you can produce on such a, a line, uh, which is also expandable up to 60 million cell cases per year. Let's have a short look also on the cylindrical cell cases. We remember there we have the different situation. It's nickel plated steel in the majority. So we have to start from a coil material. Impact extrusion is not applicable. And when you start with a coil material, one thing is clear. You have to go as wide as possible. What the widest uh, coil material available, this is, should be your choice. 
to improve the material utilization to the maximum. Now here you see example uh, with, with four outs. Um, um, yeah, material utilization is not bad, but if you can go to eight out, you even improve it by four percent, which is real money. Yeah, uh, and so it is always important to go as wide as possible with your uh, cupping. That means it's the first machine where you produce out of the coil material the first cup, the first draw. Here um, we have also a, a line configuration, looks a little bit similar, uh, but instead of this MPEG extrusion press, we have a cupping press at the front end. Then we have these transfer presses for the redraw operations and wall ironing operations. And the part after that, washing operation, as with the prismatic, where we have to wash the can to um, get rid of the lubricants and some metal fines on the can drying and the end of line process. The transfer presses are in different in size depending on the format you would like to produce. As I said, we also provide uh, all the transfer die set, the tools and all the um, parts around the presses. When we supply turnkey lines, which is our approach, uh, we have a lot of things we can provide from Schuler, but not everything. So there are some items um, which uh, we have to integrate in the line. And there we have looked out for a dedicated partner for real specialists in the field uh, so that we have a high quality, high uh, performance product. One thing is mass conveying. All these machines have to be connected to each other, uh, handling uh, vast numbers of parts. So we have here uh, working here together with company Kenline from the Netherlands, a real specialist in uh, in can handling. As mentioned, also we have to wash the can to make a clean product. Cylindrical cells and uh, prismatic cells have to be washed and dried. Here uh, we use continuous working washer and dryers with high uh, output uh, from a company IMF from Italy. Um, also tailor uh, suited to your needs um, and proven with a proven track record. And each line has its end and at the end of line, the final product which is tested should be handled with care to yeah, put into a tray, to be palletized, maybe to put in a buffer or uh, provide it through the wall to the next step. Also, this is a very important part where we uh, work together with specialist company Jorgensen Engineering from Denmark uh, to provide really top-notch solutions. So you have a little, little bit learned about our approach. We are uh, a system supplier. We integrate machines into uh, lines. This proven technology of Schuler and of dedicated partners fully digitized uh, solutions to um, control your process. We have also the resources to support you into production by training and launch assistances. We provide the solution for the process. That means tool and die. Uh, also samples or pre-series production can be made by us. And we offer also support then in the operation. That means local and remote services and service contracts for machines, dies, or complete lines for uh, the lifetime of the product. Yeah, as I said, we uh, are also then the, your uh, partner when it comes to development. That means simulation of forming process, prototyping, sample production. This can be also offered on one hand from Schuler. And all these solutions are connected and to our uh, digital solutions so uh, we can not only look back or, or monitor our, our machines but we can also look into the future what will happen next with your production line so that you get aware of possible uh, downtimes of possible uh, preventive maintenance and so on yeah uh, we would like to, to share our achievements uh, with you, discussing your challenges and our solutions for this uh, cell production. 
uh, please contact me under the email given below or on my cell phone. Uh, you can download this uh, uh, paper from uh, the, the platform here or also later on from our booth. Um, yeah, then I think this, uh, I can only say have a nice weekend and thank you very much for your attention. Yeah, thank you very much, Mr. Röver, for taking us with you through the journey of cell case production and your approach, how we can move it onto the fast lane. Um, we've got some minutes left for a short Q&A session, and there are some questions from the audience. The first one is, uh, what kind of lubricant is used for the forming of battery cell cases in your line? Yeah, there we have also um, yeah, to divide between the prismatic and the, and the uh, cylindrical cell and also the raw material, um, the, the impact extrusion uh, for, for prismatic cans. We use um, the metal soap uh, based uh, products for uh, lubricant uh, the part before forming. Whereas we are, with deep drawing, we have usually oils or emulsions uh, for the process. In both cases, uh, you have to wash off these lubricants after the process. And we also take care that we recommend to our customers the right um, combination between lubricants, between detergents, um, and the washing process to um, have a clean product at the end. Okay, thank you. Another question is, uh, what is the delivery time of such a production line you presented us? Um, yeah, the delivery time is uh, between 10 to 14 months, depending on our order backlog. Yeah. At the moment it's getting a little bit longer, but we try to uh, serve every customer. Uh, uh, but yeah, if you calculate with one year, you're, you'll be on the safe side, I would say, in the most cases. Okay, thank you very much so far. If there are any unanswered questions left, please feel free to contact Mr. Röver directly. And um, I would like to mention that the virtual exhibition can be visited until the 3rd of May. So everybody has still the chance to go through the exhibition, visit the booths. And yeah, I will recommend this option to you because you can also um, have a look on the recordings of the presentations of today because they will also be available in your own dashboard until 3rd of May, which is Monday. So finally, we come to an end of this session, housing and leakage. I think we um, get some really interesting insights from the perspective of, of research and from the perspective from the industry, some challenges, some solutions therefore. And I would like to say goodbye and um, have got a nice weekend, stay safe and see you next time at the virtual battery exhibition. Thank you. Thank you very much.